Opening the uh, regular meeting of the Planning Commission for February 1st, 2024. Uh, call to order. Call for roll call. Duke? Yes, Pearson. Here. Willenbring. Here. Campbell. Present. Stolarski. Here. McCauley. Here. Zayata is absent. And Hagen. Here. Our Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay, for the approval of the agenda, I would uh, request a motion to move the open forum item seven to follow a item eight BI. So okay. moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Uh, next is the uh, approval of minutes. Anyone have any comments or issues with the minutes as stated or as presented? Move to accept the minutes. Second. 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 Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, the next item is item 8. EI, the new business, Oakdale Marketplace and Oakdale Station Planned Unit Development Study. Luke, you have someone presenting for us? Yes, thank you. And, and I'll start with an introduction of what, what the study, what we're doing with this, and then I'll, I'll hand it off to our uh, consultant from WSB to lead the discussion with the, the commission. So I do have a, a map we'll display on the screen here in just a moment. So the city is currently engaging in a study of two planned unit developments and these uh, this area is uh, specifically located in between interstate 694 uh, 34th street and uh, ideal avenue also the, the railroad the union pacific railroad so it's basically from target all the way to la fitness uh, <clears throat> so just a little bit of background on this area it was originally planned back in the mid 2000s so uh, the Oakdale Marketplace, if you can see there on the screen, uh, that's pins and then heading east all the way to Target. So that area was planned back in 2004 and then what's known as Oakdale Station, so LA Fitness. There's a multi-tenant building and some vacant parcels there uh, abutting 694. That area was planned back in 2008. So obviously a lot has happened since then. The recession, COVID, economic conditions have changed significantly and the city is re receiving some renewed development interest in this area. Um, you may recall that the apartment building just south of the AutoZone and the, the Speedway, that got a, approved back in late 2022. And most recently, a few months back, we, uh, had a, we brought forward to the city council at a workshop a concept for what the, the vacant property there at the uh, southeast quadrant of Marketplace and 34th Street, so a proposed financial institution and an attire business as well. So when we brought that concept plan to the city council, again, this was in August of last year, the direction was for staff to conduct a study of the area. And to help with this study, we've uh, the city has hired WSB, and we have Kim Linquist here uh, to help with this study and uh, just a, maybe a little bit more information on not, not just this area, but the, the purpose of the study. We, we want to take a, another look at it. We want to uh, see if there, there might be like a refresh. How can we help guide this area going forward? There's a lot of development interest, not just in this area, but immediately to the north on 34th Street. So here at the, the, the northwest quadrant, 34th Street and High Point Drive, the city has received building permits for Aldi and a Starbucks, so we'll see those uh, uh, commencing construction at some point, probably this year, just a little bit further north, uh, uh, north of the forefront campus. Of course, we have the Willowbrook neighborhood being developed, hundreds of new homes there. And then on the east side of Ideal Avenue, we got Lake Elmo, a lot of development interest going on there. So we want to take a pause. We want to take a look at this area and see if uh, we can provide some recommendations how to improve the area going forward. With that, I will kick it off, uh, hand it off to, to Kim to help guide us through this uh, discussion. We really appreciate your feedback on the study. Thank you. Hi. 
Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself and WSB. Uh, to intro, uh, WSB started out as a civil engineering firm. We're really now a multidisciplinary firm. I'm in the community planning and economic development group. Um, my background is I've worked for the city of Rosemont for 17 years. Uh, before that, I was in Cottage Grove for seven years as a CD director. I've uh, been in Minnetonka. So a variety of different local <coughs> communities in the metro area. Um, spent a lot of time doing economic development in those communities, particularly downtown Rosemont. Um, myself and Jim Gromberg, who's enjoying Texas, uh, San Padre Island today, is um, are working with the staff here on this project. So what uh, we wanted to do tonight was we're, we're really kind of looking at the site and trying to get a feel for what people think should occur, could occur, would occur on the property. So we met with property owners, we met with business owners that are out on the site, and we've met with some uh, broker developer folks that we know because really it's all about the market and obviously things have changed over time. People are still trying to figure out what's going on with COVID, um, how retail is really happening. Obviously you've got that new residential project coming in. And so, you know, should we, the city be exploring other land uses? What do they think about some of the sites that are still left? And that is what prompted um, the, the questionnaire that you had in your packet. And so for tonight, what we're really trying to do is utilize the commission <laughs> as one of those stakeholders and ask you literally the same questions so that we can fold that all into the package. And what we'll end up doing is providing kind of an aggregated um, info about both kind of the people on the ground there, but then also some real estate folks and what they see about this particular site in the larger regional or sub-regional market. And we'll get that information to the staff. So what we're looking at um, kind of from an end product is something that really leads to some ideas about the PUD amendment. But before that, we're going to be aggregating that information. We're going to be putting together a few concepts. And then we'll also um, have some recommendations just based on the conversations that are really outside of the PUD that the city can decide they want to um, pursue some of that or not. It's obviously up to you. So I have enlisted Andrew to be the flip chart guy because I always <laughs> enjoy flip charts. Then people can see what he wrote down, if kind of get you thinking if uh, you know anybody missed something. Um, I have a green and black pen, so we're really pumped about which one he wants to use. And so really, um, we're just going to run through the questions that are in your packet. I guess um, before we do that, does anybody have any questions or comments you'd like to make before we do this exercise? My only suggestion is if you're going to move, move the clip, flipboard back a little bit so that that camera can pick it up for uh, the public to see out, out large and also the people in the audience. Um, I would just, while they're moving that, I just would make a comment too. We pulled some demographics. Those are at your desk. Um, they're just uh, some general <coughs> population, density, that type of thing. And then the other piece is um, a poll from the um, 5, 10, and 15 drive time distance from the site. And so it's really interesting when you look at what they've labeled as, you know, kind of food establishments. When we first met with uh, the city staff, we were, um, it was made known that, you know, the city was very interested in trying to attract some restaurants or fast casual to the area. Um, really, that's no different than pretty much every other city who wants more restaurants. And so that was um, more specifically a conversation that we did have with folks really trying to pull out some information about restaurants. Um, what I can say in a very general sense is that sit-down restaurants just aren't really opening right now. Um, we got that feedback from several people. It's not like you won't see them, but they tend to be expensive to uh, construct, and so you usually see them going into pre-existing restaurant buildings because it's such a, a hard, large construction cost. Obviously, with the, uh, the interest rates, that just makes it less um, appealing. And as I think almost everybody knows, restaurants you know don't have... Um, 
a good track record, um, and so they're pretty risk averse at this point. Um, there is, you know, some stronger interest out in the market itself about kind of that fast casual. Um, obviously, as things would occur in this area and in that immediate area, that might be something that could happen. And um, you know, you'll you'll see this in the final report. But one of the things that was brought up was. The, the density of development in the area, the residential density, just isn't really here yet, and, and certainly it's your neighbor to the east that's um, kind of pulling down those those numbers. So um, so just some tidbits you might want to uh, take a glance at. We'll have some more information, but that's kind of the general um, information we'll have on a demographic basis. So the first question really is, is what has your experience been in this area? Obviously, for business owners, it was, you know, how they feel about their, their business and, you know, how it's going for them. Property owners, it was how easy it is to sell or attract people. I think from um, my perspective, we're interested in how you experience that site. Are you there a lot? Is that one of your main shopping areas? Trying to get a handle on um, flow, the attraction, and then ultimately there's a question farther you know, down the list about, you know, what kinds of uses you'd like to see there. So. My first question is, could you define a little better fast casual? Because what immediately comes to mind is McDonald's, which we already have there. Oh, yeah, that would be fast food. So fast casual tends to be like a Panera, um, Chipotle. Chipotle. So it's fast, <clears throat> but they also have some sit down. And it's, I mean, now they have drive throughs too. But I mean, that was kind of a differentiator before. Pretty so much not, everybody not, is right. Anyway, so. Not bordering on fine dining, but more of a right. upgrade from McDonald's in a yes. sense. Yeah, kind of that mid-range. Yeah. So anybody want to jump in on what you what your experience has been there? What do you I think we're interested in how you feel about the area? Are you attracted to it? Do you go there often? How do you, you know, the flow of customers? Is it, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, I go to McDonald's a lot there, but <clears throat> that being said, I think that whole area to me, it seems like it's just a slop together scatter shot of businesses here with no rhyme or reason. The roads going through there, are they a road or are they a driveway? It's really tough to tell on as far as that goes. And it's just, it doesn't make a lot of sense the way it's laid out, it personally to me. I, I think to add to that, I. I somewhat agree with you, it is, we shop there, mm -hmm. we go there, we're in the area multiple times a week, but it is not a cohesive development. So we may go to Target and then we leave. Mm -hmm. We may go to Pins and then we leave. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that draws you there and kind of anchors you in that space for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You know, like juxtapose. So multiple <clears throat> trips. Right. 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 So yeah, you're you're going there and then you're on your way to another mm -hmm. you know, retail shopping center. I can if I too, if you wouldn't mind. What do you mean um, about the roads versus the driveways? Like they're not wide enough, you don't they're it's, not comfortable. It's, well, to like drive when on. You, you you know the main road you got coming in down there and then you can split off and go to SA or you can go to Target. Now the road to Target, it's a road, but it could be a driveway. It doesn't look like a big feeder. And when you go the other way, towards pins and everything else, I mean, that's snaky and it does not look like a real road. It looks like a driveway with access to businesses mm -hmm. off it. You're talking 32nd Street? Is well, the one between, so when you're, the one that goes by SA, mm -hmm. and then it goes to AutoZone. So you, 30, okay. so you can, it's like this, this row or this row? It's the one that's higher up. Uh, okay, this. That one right there. Yeah. And the ones that go through. So it's the one that goes down the center of the development. Okay. Well, they are actually right. Okay. Yeah. But it's it's just weird when you come in there, if your person's like, it's just, confusing. if you come there the first time, it's confusing yeah. on even how to get, like if you were going down to LA Fitness, uh -huh. I don't think you can drive straight down that road to get to LA Fitness. No. You got to go out and around. So do you think, I mean, do you think people I, I know personally, probably, I don't go to LA Fitness, but I'm sure that if I was trying to go there, I would have turned by SA and I would have ended up at the auto zone with no way to get to LA Fitness. Yeah. 
So there's, it doesn't tie the whole section together. It's, the, it's certainly a matter of whether or not you go there frequently. I, I go to LA Fitness practically every day. Right. And but if you wanted to do other things, you're, <laughs> you're segregated and separated. Yeah. If it's a one-off for one destination, you're fine. Yeah. Or if you know where you're going. But it's just, if you're coming in there the first time, it, it doesn't it, make a lot of sense. If you're coming in in the middle of it, yes. LA Fitness is pretty easy. Uh, the exit from it is a bit more difficult because you legally have to come back down that road to 32nd yeah, uh, Street and then up the center yeah. road. So I agree it's not clear. I know we've taken the wrong turn, <laughs> you know, by pins, thinking we can get to Target. Mm. And I don't know. I've been confused there, too. Okay. It's just a bad design. Kim, well, you mentioned signage. I think, I think if there was a more cohesive, there, like there's not a signage plan right there. I think if you had some wayfinding signage that helps, again, anchor that development as, mm -hmm. as one cohesive unit, mm -hmm. um, because you can have the <clears throat> same identity and all of that signage kind of spread throughout. So it serves two, two functions then, just the wayfinding and then. Is the signage is there it. just basically one pillar for all of the stores? Or is, or is there a two pillar? Are there two pillars? There's at least remember. one pylon sign that I'm aware of off 34th. I, I could be misremembering though. The 34th and the thing between McDonald's and the the uh, gas station. And if the there is, I, I honestly, I don't yeah, remember I it. You. I think there's just the one. That's why that might lead to the confusion because mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's quite a distance from Target to LA Fitness and it's just the one in the middle. Yeah, I have two thoughts on that. One, um, going back to the direction thing is, I think really though what, what is interesting about that is you're the users, but I mean, those are the same things that businesses are worried about. If people can't figure out how to navigate to get to mm -hmm. them, then obviously it becomes a less attractive site for them. So obviously anything you can do to get people to notice them and know how to get there efficiently is obviously a good sign. Um, the other thing I would say about the pylon sign is we did get some feedback that people would love to try to get a sign on 694 um, that covered both, which I think is, of course, always an issue with cities is you've got two different property owners, two different developers. You don't want a ton of signage, but they're saying, you know, getting something that's highly visible on the freeway for the whole area because people don't say, well, I'm going to the marketplace. I'm not going to the other. Um, you know, something that there was some interest from a few folks. Which I guess brings up another point. That's why I had talked to Luke earlier about is the north, the north part of north of 34th Street and mm -hmm. south of 34th Street are basically, in concept, it's probably going to end up being one shopping area, unfortunately divided by a major highway that you can't get across. Right. So there's definitely going to be a need for something to allow foot traffic between them, especially with the major uh, development of north of Emation. And for that matter, south. Do we know how many, I mean, I know we know, <clears throat> does somebody know offhand how many individual landowners have these vacant pieces? Because it's not all one landowner, correct? No. Uh, yeah, if, if we could bring up the map on the screen, I could Look point it out. Yeah. So the undeveloped lot there, that's one owner in the southwest area there, undeveloped, that's also a separate owner, but just one owner. And then, th yeah, oh yeah, there, there's one more at the, the T intersection, Marketplace, and is it 32nd Street? That's another uh, vacant lot that's, it's owned by, I believe, the same same folks who own this lot here. What, what's just north, directly north of that next to, uh, is it just McDonald's up there? That's yeah, that would be McDonald's. Yeah, two Stone Financials there too. Yeah. Yes. And then Target has their two outlot right. type things. It's all uh, Target owns it's all, it's all one, one large. Yeah, but lot. effectively. Yeah. You're right. You don't have good penmanship. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So too too late. Yeah, now. maybe the black will be. I just thought it might, might be helpful if you know you can <laughs> scan it and then decide if you we missed anything. Um. So I'm going to move on if we, if anybody doesn't have anything else to add. Or you can always come back or you can add it on a different page. There's multiple pages. Okay, so uh, the next question is, what do you like about this area? And do you think there's any neighborhood amenities that are missing? Um, again, there's a little bit of a difference in the responses, whether you're a property owner or a business owner, in terms of what you like. 
uh, just because it's kind of, I'm sure it's kind of tied to their experience. Um, but I think most of the businesses on the whole were happy that they were at the site and, you know, they, they're doing fine. I, I don't think they're, you know, hitting a home run, so to speak, but they're, um, they're comfortable. Anybody want to, as, as the consumers that go there, uh, any thoughts? Well, I know Pins is the only restaurant type place up there at, the, at this point. So I'm assuming the, you, the, what you were describing is somewhere between fine dining and McDonald's. That would be a, a, a good asset there. I don't know what's going to be on the north side of 34, but again, getting traffic, getting people between the two is going to be an issue. <clears throat> a bakery would be amazing. Desert. Besides gas stations, do we have a bakery anywhere in Oakdale? <coughs> I don't think Oof. so. A dedicated bakery? No. I think the closest one that I go to is Grandma's Bakery in White Bear. I can't think of any off the top of my head. So. Well, you've got Cub and I think they make yeah. bread down in that industrial area. It's not the same. Area. It's not <coughs> down on no. 4th. Yeah, but do they, Some, sell, they don't sell it. It's not a bakery, store. but they make bread. <laughs> <coughs> hey, um, the, the staff provided some information to us that we'll be um, kind of giving back to you. But there are some restrictions on the property by the property owners when they came in. And so my I next think, question for you. I think um, you may be surprised at some of those restrictions that place you uh, retailers or commercial uses that you would think would be very typical for this area are excluded. Now that doesn't mean uh, you can't get the okay, um, but basically with development, it's time and money and how hard, you know, level of certainty. And so. Um, was that due to the original planned development for that area? Not the city re regulations. Okay. So as an example, my, my industry is car washes. Target has a restriction on that development that you can't have a car wash. So it's part of, as they're doing the deal with the original land developer, they say, hey, we don't want these 25 things in this <laughs> development because it's going to add traffic, it's a noxious use, it's, you know, whatever. And then it gets us into the situation where you're, where, you're, where you're handcuffed. Yeah, so you've got a competition issue, and then you've got also issues where they don't, um, like that, that they don't feel it maybe fits with their, so. Um, we kind of voiced our opinions against car washes for the, <laughs> for the northern section as well, so. I know I'm going to, I'm going to, fight it now because I'm on the other side of the coin. <laughs> um, I've seen the light. So During the, we'll, we'll address any issues immediately after you get a voice then. So we're um, talking about, you know, what do you like about the area? So we kind of mentioned before, you know, the circulation's a little wonky and it's a little confusing for people when they're first navigating. Got any... I like this about it. I go there all the time. I... Well, like I said, I go to LA Fitness. Mm -hmm. Recovery issues, but that's I'm de I'm there practically daily. Mm -hmm. So I, there, uh, that's one of the area, things I like about the area is it does have that facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of the mix of uses is nice. It's just that you might not get as many multiple trips. I hate to say it, but I shop Woodbury, so I don't even go out that way. So I don't shop that area at all. Okay. Do you think, so the question was, do you think there's any amenities missing? Not talking about like a restaurant or anything, talking about like sidewalks, trails, uh, park, um, more landscaping. As, as I've said, getting from north, north to south and okay. south to north, that's, that's an issue. And this will exaggerate that problem. I'm sorry. They're building up this area along with the area on the north, is going to exaggerate that problem. There will be people crossing, and they're really, except down by the stoplight, there isn't a safe place to cross. 
I don't so know. are you thinking maybe a pedestrian bridge or a tunnel under 34? <laughs> there, yeah, there's a, <laughs> there, is a, there is a light in the middle going up to 3M, but it's, mm -hmm. it's also an issue. Pedestrian, t a pedestrian bridge or something would be useful, I think, for joining the two sides to some degree. And especially with the apartments that are being built mm -hmm. down there now, the apartments that are just north of it, and the, all the homes further north. There may be a lot of pedestrian traffic there. It's an interesting point. What I'm curious of is there's a number of Anna's Grove residents here tonight, and I'm curious how many of them walk to that that's, development. So that's why we moved the agenda so that they could yeah. join in with us. Anybody else? Otherwise, we'll move on to question three, and that is <coughs> probably the main one that you hear most from <coughs> residents is, what kind of uses do you think are missing or would do well in, in this area? Um, yeah, I don't know if this is un considered an amenity, but a community garden, are there any community gardens in Oakdale? Doesn't seem to be. You know, I see them in St. Paul and Maplewood and um, I, I just think of my husband, he loves to garden and you know, in the future we want to move to a smaller place and that's going to be really important if he doesn't have land that he can garden. So I just, but that doesn't generate income. <laughs> to, to me this is, this seems very much like a neighborhood center. It's not a power center like we see over in Tamarack. So when I look at this, I think of things like, you know, somewhere where you can get your hair cut, um, you know, the coffee, the local coffee shop, a bakery, a the, the quick serve, you know, fast casual type restaurants. Um, it's just kind of those neighborhood services. You know, and especially when you look at the parcel sizes left, you're not going to get a big box. You're not going to get a junior size box. You, you know, there's no... Home Depot or Kohl's or anything coming in here, so. <clears throat> Anybody else? One that just came as a possibility is something like a UPS store for shipping, mailing, post office boxes. Copy now your Amazon great, that you great don't example. want. Well, that's up to Amazon to decide where you can drop it off. <laughs> There is, a, there is a delivery one over in LA Fitness, actually, so. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Any other thoughts? Um, any, one of the things that you're seeing now in malls or in commercial areas is, you know, there's less retailers, and so they're moving to more of that experiential, I can't say it well. Um, Experiential. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uses. Um, I mean, you guys actually, you know, with LA Fitness and the pins, I mean, that's that's pretty good, I would think. But any thoughts about anything like that? Pins does have an entertainment center for for games, mm. for kids and things like that, <laughs> and adults. But it's quite an entertainment center. I think it's a, it may be somewhat underutilized, but it's available there. All right, the next question is, what uses would you not want to see in that area? Just the south side. I guess I'd agree with the office spacing because that really was the original intent was to be a lot of small offices and that economically just never materialized, so don't push for that, I guess. Thanks. I don't think the developers even have an appetite for it there anymore either. Banks and fast food, don't get me excited. <laughs> no more auto parts store. <laughs> Car wash would look real nice there. <laughs> you have somebody's hand wash in my car at that one. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Okay, and then the final question really is just, you know, what do you think the city can do 
to assist businesses in the area, but also attracting business to the area. Have you um, thought about some ways that maybe makes this more attractive? Um, there were small businesses, I'd say small business loans, but I think we're tr you're trying to gear away from mostly small businesses, I th it sounds like. And large business businesses will come with their own list of demands anyway. And I think what it's what's challenging is again, I, I just think about my day job. We're making our site selection decisions on the area demographics first and foremost. And then those incentives may start to come into play. Mm -hmm. But even then, you know, if you give me half a million dollars, doing a ten million dollar project, it's it's helpful, right? But it doesn't necessarily sway the deal one way or the other. You know, I've I've made my decision on there's enough rooftops here, there's enough density, there's enough, you right. know, what have you, high enough income that my business can be successful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's it's a it can be a struggle. I can tell you that I think our city does a good job already of working with developers and, and just, it's an easier process. You know, I work in some municipalities where if, you know, it's, it's you're, you're fighting an uphill battle to just get anything done. And I don't think Oakdale operates that way. I think we are very much a, you know, our door is open, we're here to help you. How can we, how can we get this mm -hmm. done? Anybody else have any other <coughs> comments on that last question? Otherwise, I've got a question for you. Um, we're seeing more initially designated commercial land go to residential, because that's popular right now, a multifamily. Um, really, you know, a high demand for that. What is, the, you individually, you know, what's your position, do you think, geez, it's been 20 years, let's just get something going here and help the businesses that are there? Do you think it's worth waiting some more? Because, I, you know, we asked some of the brokers, and they're like, I can't tell you if it's five years, if it's seven years. You know, it's hard to know. And frankly, until Lake Elmo kind of um, makes up their mind, that's, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So kind of if you could decide, wait or go with some of the things that are kind of before you. In short order, we're going to have, what, 700 units of people there between the two apartment buildings on the north and on the south. So there's going to be some pen, some desire for them to have places to shop, do things within <clears throat> walking distance. So. We waited many years for Oakdale Mall to leave. And then it left, then we had to do something with it. And many years, and once High V came in, they tore, literally tore it down. A lot changed up in that area. It forced Cub to move, or Rainbow, whatever you want to call it, to move through that. So to me, I think waiting, like you said, you have enough residential, enough housing that's going to make a difference in the north. Give it time to grow. Get the time for people to come in there and see. Yeah, I guess I would, for me, I'm not, I'm not inherently opposed to, to multifamily residential. It's expensive. Rents are high. Anybody that rents in these buildings probably pays more than most of us do in a mortgage. But does that mean I'm in a position to say all of that vacant land needs to go to residential mm -hmm. because we have to fill it up today? Not at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if the right project comes along, Absolutely, we can consider it. Mm -hmm. I think there's opportunity. Um, you know, one of the things that the impact departments is doing that I, I like that I think could be successful here is they've got some of that first floor. Um, they've got a restaurant that they're, they're planning there. So could you, you know, if we were going to go that direction with residential, is there opportunity to do some of that you know, four yeah, over one choose. type of thing with 
yeah, retail restaurants on the first floor, residential above. Um, and just be truly more mixed use. Mm -hmm. Sort of to tack on to what he's saying, but it's probably not for here. I don't even know how well it goes over, but I grew to like when I was over in Europe, people would live upstairs and the whole street level, you know, you could be upstairs and run down to the corner mm -hmm. and get your bread and, and meat and Bacon. lettuce for the next day and go back home. So I sort of like that concept. You don't see it a lot here, but it's sort of nice to have the residential and some commercial where you don't need to go five miles away to get something that on the spur of the moment. So that's kind of the end of our questions. I, you know, they were a little more tailored to property owners and, uh, you know, some of the businesses. So are there things maybe we didn't touch on that the commission would like to um, make mention while we're, while we're putting together the final, final work here? Anyone have anything? If not, no. then we'll, perhaps we'll move on to the public forum. Because I know at least one gentleman has some comment he wants All to right. make to something you said. I will, I will move out of line. <clears throat> okay. At this time, I'd like to open the public forum. Uh, there are some rules, which I won't read, but basically they say uh, <laughs> keep the comments brief to the point and uh, don't be too repetitive. And if you have any comments, please come forward. So I open the public forum at this moment. Anyone wishing to make comment, please come forward. Okay, well, how are you doing? You was Dan Zimlich? Uh, when you come up to the microphone, oh. please give your name and address. What is this, sir? Name and address. I'm Dan Zimlich, 7532 31st Street North. Thank you. Now, I'm going to tell you, we love Anna's Grove. Built a house in 98. You know, a lot of us were very upset. Uh, number one, I want to say thank you for letting us come up here. Because a lot of us were really upset when we found out about the apartment building being built. A lot of us was promised that it was going to be retail. And I want to tell you, there's been benefits. I just retired from the reserves a few years back. When I was overseas, when I was gone for a long time, my wife loved running to Target or McDonald's. I have four kids. That was a godsend for her because she didn't have time to run across. But um, my kids practically loved that Target, getting all their toys from there. Personally, last night, we went Valentine's Day shopping. There is nothing in our area. So she got her Valentine gift early. But if, I would love to have a restaurant there. We were promised that 20 years ago. I understand why it fell through. Nothing to do with you guys. Unfortunately, politics got in the way. And the builders didn't promise, didn't go through what the city said. I understand that part. But I would love to see the area developed. I don't want to see another apartment building. Um, I understand what you're talking about. I was in Wiesbaden, Germany. What, what country were you at? Uh, I was over there on a DOD tour, so I was in Germany, Belgium, uh, Iceland, Spain, France. So I so traveled seen, a little bit over there. I've seen half the countries you've seen on military duty. So we under, I understand where you're coming from. It's nice to have a close place to get food at, close place to get something. Uh, the reason I raised my hand, I washed my car yesterday at SA right over there. <laughs> my industry is tunnel, express tunnel car washes. Okay. So high volume, very quick kind of thing. That's why Target doesn't want that is because we're bringing in hey, you know, a thousand cars a day. I, you know, SA was just fine for me yesterday. Yeah. So that's what I was going to talk. Even got a Powerball. So I want to see something close. My kids go to, you know, McDonald's once in a while. But they said, you know, they got sick of McDonald's. They had to drive somewhere else, like Taco John's, Taco Bell, Piera. There's nothing. They would love to have another restaurant close by. So that's what the people want. They want to keep this as a community. They want to, you know, it's a, it's a great area. Let's keep it that way. So I think you're not objecting to anything that's been presented tonight as plans. If you try building our apartment, I'm going to get a petition going. <laughs> 
And I like the idea about the garden because my son actually said, he goes, that area down there, it's kind of swampy. They threw a bunch of dirt there. The mountains went down, but it's still kind of swampy down there. He goes, he goes suggest that be a garden or some type of habitat. Just ironic that you said that and he said that before I left here. So maybe in that far corner, maybe do something nice. But we want to see something close by because when I get done with work, I don't want to run across. I mean, I love Hy-Vee, but that's too far for me to run over there. I want something close. And thank you for giving me this time. Yes. Anyone else wish to make comments, please? Just give your name and address, please. Uh, Dylan and Michelle Cosgrove, 7680, 31st Street Plaza, and Anna's Grove there. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yep. Um, agreed with everything you basically all said. Uh, to your point, Chris, uh, do we in Annan's Grove walk there? There's paths that lead there, but no, we don't, because I go to Target, I go to LA Fitness, and that's it. I don't go to McDonald's, I don't go to the bank. I do use at Alina. Um, but yeah, it's all just hit or miss, and I don't stay there. So I'd love to see some local businesses, bakery, meat shop would be awesome, a brewery, bringing in all those food trucks that we have a lot of local food trucks, um, community garden or pool, somewhere our kids can walk to that's not going to cost us an arm and a leg. Pins, yes, entertainment, we're going to spend 200 bucks there. I want to go somewhere where we can sit down, play some board games, and enjoy our family outside of the home. In addition to all that, um, there's no really cohesive look to the area. Um, it, you know, to the, the, the driveways versus, you know, roads, uh, absolutely. Um, the, the, you know, the, the doesn't make a lot of sense with the Speedway and the Harlan, um, just the way everything kind of fits together. So I don't know if there's, you know, ultimately it has been 20 years, you know, the, some of the infrastructure has atrophied, but you got a lot of assets in terms of trails for that area. So there's an opportunity for, all the people moving into our area to really leverage that and get around. Um, but just kind of refreshing curb, refreshing uh, the sidewalks to get across there, maybe changing the cadence of the lights or something, you know, to make it a little bit safer. Our, our kids are going to want to venture over to that other area, right? That would be out of our purview. That would be in Washington County. I know. That's the thing that stinks. You know, then Stan always ducks us on that question. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'll get to you. Email me. Um, but uh, that being said, though, I think you could do more internally in that area, too, to kind of maybe flow and direct traffic a little bit better, uh, both foot and um, cars. Yeah, I'd love to get there and just walk around. Healthy food options I love. I love the casual idea, Chipotle or... Um, uh, again, local shops, whether it's a little thrift store or boutiques, places that we can go and not have to spend an arm and a leg, but enjoy. Landscaping would bring that in. The experiences type activities as well, you know, other innovative uses of that. Um, I don't know what it would be beyond pins, but, you know, because that is a big area, but, you know, other things to keep them there. Um, mm -hmm. We'll drive all the way to Super Target in Woodbury instead of going to that Target. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's quite often because there's just more stuff i can go get duck donuts we can do whatever yep we shop in woodbury as um, well so yep. um things we don't want to see is more residential that's for sure yeah we're on that so all right all right thank you thank you anyone else who would like to come forward and make comment i'll offer once more and uh, before i close the public forum anyone else wish to come forward to make comment seeing none i close the public forum Bring it back. Any other comments from the commissioners? Nope. Seeing none, move on to staff liaison update. Yes, thank you. So do expect that we have a, a March meeting. We have, uh, we'll, we'll probably have two or three applications, development applications there. Uh, maybe just an update on the public works building, that, that facility that you saw last month. Uh, that will go to the city council leave on February 13th and then oh, uh, what was the other item on on the uh, the last agenda I'm spacing out right now um, was that Twin Cities towing as well yeah, I think so so that will also go to the City Council on February 13th as well so. thank you any uh, commissioner updates anyone have anything that they wish to say Council liaison, Mr. Jake.
I have nothing, but uh, if you have questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. All right. I guess we have done. Thank you very much. That moves us to adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We stand adjourned.